Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Hey, everybody in the club getting tipsy. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Hey, welcome to Bed Talk, where uh, we sit in the bed. And we talk. Type in. Let's get it. So uh, I go by the name Trey Prada. And my name is Jay Monet. Don't play with her. Shout out to us. We we did it. We did it. We're we, here. We, we said we were going to do it. We talked about it. And it's official. Whole production in the bedroom. Literally. <laughs> it's a vibe. How did I find? How did I meet you? Like, who are you? Like, how, how, did, you come in, how did you come into my life? I mean, like, why? What are you talking about? Oh, it's the ring for me. <laughs> it's the ring for me. So do you want to tell the story about how we came into each other's life, or do you want me to tell it? So what happened was, I was on Tinder. <laughs> I was on Tinder. You know, I was going through a rocky roller coaster, a breakup at the time, and a uh, horrible <laughs> breakup. And, uh, you know, I was just out trying to find myself and take a break from this thing called love, you know, Oops. and I was just, I was just, you know, I was just out having fun on Tinder and I was swiping left and I was swiping right. And then I laid my eyes on this beautiful young lady bow, bow, bow. and on her, on her Tinder, she, uh, it, it, I, I just didn't want to risk the chance that she wouldn't swipe right on me. So I took matters into my own hands. A win is a win. When is a win? So she happened to have her Instagram on the Tinder, and I was like, "Shit, I'm not gonna wait for for her to possibly swipe on me. I'm gonna take matters into my own hands." And I slid up in them DMs. And the best thing about that, because I definitely had the Tinder notifications off. You hit them off. <laughs> yeah, it was not gonna get nothing through yeah, me. It, we wouldn't have met. <laughs> nope. It's fate. So after I slid in them DMs, you know, I said, you know, I hope you don't mind that, you know, I, I seen you get your profile on Tinder and I felt like, you know, reaching out to you directly, you know, and uh, if you don't mind, you know, respond. Yeah, I think, I think you thought I was going to be stuck up. Yeah, you, you gave bougie. Because your response was you gave like, bougie. please, you know, low key, like, talk to me. Like, if you don't, then just like, ah, I'm like, I don't know. You yeah. just looked at me like, gosh, I feel like she may not even go for it. Yeah, it gave it gave low key bougie. I ain't gonna lie, like a little bit. Like she had like these beach pictures and stuff. I was like, this girl be traveling. <laughs> when Chicks from it? Philly, the, 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 the farthest they get is Jersey, New York, uh, and Punta Cana, and cruises and shit. I said, Man, I'm gonna shoot my shot though. Yeah, hook, line, and sinker. So how would you feel about that? When once I how did how did that go with me sending you that first message and. How do you feel as though that that interaction went? So, if I'm gonna be honest, first thing I did went on the page. I thought thirty, I saw thirty k followers immediately. I'm like, this is a scam. <laughs> <laughs> like this man only followed me or wrote a message to get to get me to follow back. Like mm. this is what that is. Cause like you thought I was going to the, the, the follow one follow method <laughs> on you. <laughs> Cause like I literally have maybe five or six k followers on IG. So somebody. Messaging me that has 30k is just like, oh, they finna hit me with the scamming messages after this nice mm. message and I respond. That was my first thought process. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So then I start looking through the pictures. I feel like you're too close to the little closer to me. A little closer to me, Sorry, baby. I'm fat. I'm pregnant, y'all. Oh, yeah. Me. Listen, lyric on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm mm -hmm. fat and pregnant. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sound like a 300 pounds. <clears throat> So, yeah, so I had that the whole thought process that somebody with 30K is not interested. Like, you got a plethora of people in your life, you don't. Know? So that was my first thought. And I looked in the page and I was like, oh, first thing, honestly, first thing that attracted me to you was your tattoos. Okay. It was a win. A win is a win. <laughs> and then you're into music. I was into music. So it was just like little things. I was just like, okay, maybe it's not a scam. Mm. Let's see where it goes. Yeah. You, know, you never know. Mm -hmm. And bam. <laughs> and it just happened to work out. Yes. Mm -hmm. It did. Better than how about that first it. link? That first link though. I guess I'll tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> so we came off of Instagram mm -hmm. and went into text messages. I was at work at the time, I was working at a bar. 
and voice messages while I'm working because it was slow, text messages and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, he's like, oh, you know, you want to hang out or whatever. I was like, well, you know, I'm at work. He's like, oh, where you work at? You know, I was like, oh, I told him where I worked at. And he was like, oh, I'll pull up on you. So me and my mom being in Atlanta mm-hmm. with guys before, it's just like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm going to pull up on you, me. I ain't really Playing games, <laughs> you be playing games. All this, you know, this this this, this fake facade of a, a image. And it's like, this, that's not even you for real. You got a mask on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to pull up really mean like. I'm trying to fuck. I'm trying. That, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can fuck. That or either. I'm just wasting your time. That too. Okay. So when he's like, "I'm pull up," I was like, "Okay." Well, his address, like at the time, like no location sharing, you know, none of that. We just met. So like next thing you know, it's just like you text. I'm in the back grabbing something. He's like, "I'm here." Yo, heart <laughs> dropped to the floor. <laughs> Bow. <laughs> I was like, "Stop playing." Sitting right at the bar waiting for me. I'm like, oh damn, I look crazy. Like I had on like stains on my shirt from oh work. My, and <laughs> my old leggings, like I looked like I was working. Like it gave working. But guess what though? <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't coming with any type of intentions. Like it was strictly to get to know you. And our vibe was super, 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 super strong off the rip from the gum bus. So I'm just like, yo. I'm trying to meet you. Like, I'm not even trying to keep playing and, and dragging this out. Like, I'm pulling up. So, to be honest, what you had on or, you know, your being at work and all that, that wasn't nowhere near, like, what was on my mind. Yeah. It was like, yo, she funny as shit. She cool as shit. And then she made me this strong-ass Long Island. <laughs> That's where you <laughs> fell in love. <laughs> I said, hey, yo. She not going well. The key to my heart is a nice, nice little strong did that and the crazy thing is i look like i'm working and you look like dapper dan the chains oh on grills oh and God. earrings the rings on like whole fit like it was like damn first impressions is everything <laughs> <laughs> i'm not work though it's okay like. you know listen you already know how i am well now you know how i am so at, at that time you probably was like this nigga yeah, I was, the whole time I was like, I look crazy, don't I? He's like, no, like, I look crazy. Mm-hmm. It's okay. You can say I look crazy. Yeah. I mean, say. you look like you was working. I want to say you look crazy. I definitely look crazy. We can agree not to disagree. <laughs> so after that, what happened? We went to a, we basically, you know, chopped it up. You gave me a kiss. I gave you a kiss. Mm-hmm. Me. All right, I took it. I took the kiss. <laughs> okay. I said, What's come here, girl. <laughs> Tell the come, here. come here, girl. <laughs> Tell the full story. Come in, girl. Because honestly, I was a schoolgirl, so I wasn't. Yeah. Definitely wasn't. You know. No, I took that. Yeah, I wasn't I took, taking. I took. I took, I took this. I took matters into my own hands. Definitely did. What they say: if you want something, you gotta go for it. Yeah. And the energy was just like that. So it was just like you know how when you meet somebody, and it's like you just felt like you just known them your whole life. That's what it felt like. Twin. Twin flame. <laughs> so I guess that we could segue into our first question. Okay. All right. To add to this backstory, we're now engaged, expecting a child, living together, the whole spiel. We're in love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we, we locked in yeah. at this point. And, and as we go, you know, with each episode, we will give you guys a little bit more, you know, bit by bit. So stay tuned and you know, keep up with us. And matter of fact, hit that subscribe button right there. Smash that. Smash that right now. Do it for lyric. Listen. <laughs> oh, 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 oh God, do that. Do that yeah, for baby for girl. Sure. Um. So I guess it wouldn't. This wouldn't really. It's kind of hard to say that this would pertain to us because we already. We I know the answer to what you're going to say, and I feel like you know what I'm going to say. Okay. But is there such thing as love at first sight? I just feel like love is blind. Like it's not something you physically see because love is not something seen. It's like a feeling. Mm-hmm. It's like a connection. It's like a. It's so much deeper than what you see. That's why a lot of people. Uh, as the relationships go on, bodies change, babies come, weight loss, weight gain, and it's just like, ew, because like, mm-hmm. you went looking at it. Like, right. I love what I see right now, but mm-hmm. everything changes yeah. like throughout everything. So you definitely see me go from little petite little thing to bam, bam <laughs> out of nowhere. So. Stomach what? Where? Where? Stomach where? Waist where? Ding, 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 ding. Not looking I still love the curves, baby. I still love that. I still love that. You know, all of that. You know it. All of that. So you, so you feel as though love is blind. Yeah, like you can't see love. 
Because mm-hmm. that to me that goes more into lust and it's not love. Mm-hmm. Just like you see a bag that you like, oh, I really like that, mm-hmm. but that you can get tired of that bag because mm-hmm. something else then came and caught your eye all over again. Right. So I don't think you see love. So I feel like love is blind. Okay, I feel that. I, I feel like personally, love at first sight <clears throat> is a cliche term, and really I feel like it's about the energy. You know what I'm saying? So like. More so love at first energy, <laughs> if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I feel like energy doesn't lie. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if, like example, to go like to our relationship, it felt like I knew you my whole life. And it was really like our first like week talking. Right? But it was like, you couldn't tell me like I didn't meet you from another a past life or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, we was already finishing each other's sentences. And it was just like... What the fuck you been all my life? Like typical things you have to ask a person for is just like, oh, I got, and we both like, I got it. No, I got it. Right. Get back. It's like we arguing over who's gonna pay or who's gonna do this or who's gonna do that, who's gonna cook, who's gonna, and it's just like both of us came from situations where we didn't have that before. Mm-hmm. So it's just like us being who we are and both on the like. It's like no, put your card up. No, put your card up. No, mm-hmm. you and just fighting over like yeah. the, the the pettiest things, but it just goes to show like we just we just there. So, what are some red flags to watch out for in a new relationship? That's a that's a that's a really tough question for a person like me. Mm-hmm. Like, listen, let them have it. Let's <laughs> because, talk about it. Okay, let's, let's talk, about, talk it. about it. <laughs> because, like, me having such a big heart, red flags are oftentimes I look at them as orange, a little yellow. Like, mm-hmm. I don't take them for I don't take things for face value at first. It takes a lot for me to be like, hey, okay, this is not for you. Mm-hmm. But from learning from those situations, red flags to where you're not a priority, like just little things you're not thought about, like simple check ins throughout the day, or uh, you know, birthdays coming up, or mm-hmm. uh, maybe a some family member passed or something like that and just like you just not in tune you could care less it's just like but when it comes to that person they want to be wine and dine fed they want you to be there they want you to be emotional support they want you to be everything and then it's just like you pouring into people mm-hmm. but nothing's given back to you so you basically you have an empty cup right so um to name some of those red flags like even more um the whole I'm busy thing mm-hmm. drives me crazy because mm-hmm. like you can post on social media, you can text your friends, you can do every little other thing besides take the time out of the day to be like, hey, it takes two seconds. Right. Like literally, how are you? It takes a millisecond, maybe a second or two to send that to that person. Right. Like I just feel like being thoughtful counts. Like, so if you don't care about me, you wouldn't care how my day is going. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't care how I'm feeling or if I'm coming to you. And I'm expressing myself, and at the end of it, it's just like, all you talked about was you. Like right, right. It's, it's not tit for tat. Yeah. Like, it's not like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm interested in what's going on with you, or you interested in what's going on with me. I'm willing to learn about what you got going on and vice versa. Yeah, so it's but just like, I'm a take, me, take, me. take. Yep, I mean, me. I call it the me syndrome. Yeah, definitely. It's all about me, 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 me. Yes, yeah, especially if you're having a conversation, yeah. and then it turns to... Me, I, mm-hmm. I did this, you know, when I, 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 and it's just like, okay, I'm never going to get my thought process out. Because right. at the end of the day, you don't really care what I think. That part. So I think that's a major red flag. Time spent, like, I giving excuses to see a person. Like, we ain't got all the time in the world to do everything mm-hmm. else. But when it comes to them, something always coming up. Something always got to happen. It's just like, you're not a priority, sis. Like, right. <laughs> it's right. not. Just I name agree. a few. I agree. A red flag to watch out for in a relationship for me is a woman who literally can't take accountability in the beginning. Because if you can't take accountability in the, in the beginning, you never want to take it. You know. Yeah. And I feel like at the end of the day, going going into any situation, I I try to take myself out of out of the situation or take myself out of my shoes and put myself in the other person's shoes like you know what i mean like okay let me understand why you feel this way or or how it could possibly come off to you and it's like okay maybe i did say that a little harsh or maybe i blah 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 whatever the case may be but for somebody who can't just it's never them early on no can't go through that again <laughs> can't go through that again 
Um, so outside of that, um, I think another red flag is someone who can't leave their phone alone. Like when it's just us, like bro, mm. just like just let it just be. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or you need to constantly, you know, check it. Just constantly be on social media. Now I get it. It's one thing that like some people do have social anxiety, phone anxiety. That's a real thing. I get it. But it's just like I feel like because I do. I'm guilty of it much myself. I'll be on the phone, but I don't feel like I'm still engaging. Like some people will be like, so oh, you're this is this is you talking to them? How, how's your day going? Like no type of nothing interaction back. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Passive aggressiveness. Like my one ex, I'm not gonna say her name. I had a show or whatever. I was performing and <sighs> I came out of the show or whatever and I was just, you know, talking to everybody around me or whatever. And they like I, they were super drunk, first of all. They smacked my cup out of my hand that I was drinking. It was like, fuck out of here. Da, 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 da. Like, who do you think you are? And it's like, why are you doing all? Why are you showing off like this? Uh uh-uh. uh. This is, this is, this is not cute. This is not. It's <laughs> nothing cute about being just toxic. Yeah. Like, just relax. Yeah, for sure. What you got going on? This, this, ooh, nasty work. Nasty work. <laughs> nasty <man>. work. <laughs> this can go on. Yeah, that red flag list could go on and on. We ain't going. Mm-hmm. Delay on the, you know, hold on to that one too yeah, long. Yeah, but yeah, yeah definitely least... could go on. How do you know if you're settling or genuinely in love? I can answer this wholeheartedly because I've done it yeah. multiple times. Yeah. Um, just like I said before, not seeing the things or not seeing the red flags or to the point, but by the end of it, you're literally beat down. You're exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally. Like mm-hmm. you, you are tired. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a partner is supposed to be the opposite of that. Mm-hmm. They uplift you. They uh, motivate you. Mm-hmm. Um, they are your shoulder to lean on. Like at the end of the day, you should not be feeling like the person you're laying next to is a stranger. Yeah. And if you're in that so long, that's you settling. Yeah. Like, oh, I want to marry this person, but home isn't home with them. Right. That's settling. Yeah. Done it. Right. Right. <laughs> Definitely that's settling when it doesn't feel like I look at our relationship is like it's like home. Mm-hmm. Like if I can't come to you and I don't feel safe or I not comfortable mm-hmm. or I feel like I have to walk on eggshells. I'm laying next to you and it's like cold. It's like no type of connection, anything mm-hmm. like that. And you stay in something like that, definitely settling. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I feel that. Coming from those past relationships to where I am now, baby, I settled. <laughs> Night and day. I settled. It was like, what was I doing? I laid the foundation to settle to lay there. Oh, like, my yeah, gosh. This is it. This yeah. got to be life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's done with. It's over with. Yeah. Listen, it was when you know, you know. At this point. Ignorance is bliss. When you don't know, you don't know. It's like you think this is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And I was like talking to you about, you know, like to go back to what you were saying, like arguing every day, every other day. Like you, you start to think it's normal, like, but it's not. It's not. It doesn't have to be that way. We argue every once in a blue moon. And if we do bicker about something, it's like lighthearted. Like we get through it like literally less than a day. Yeah. Compared to stuff like what a week we ain't talking. Now we on a break. Now we did that. Da, 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 da. You done cheated because da, 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 da. like I crazy, you. crazy. <laughs> I um, <can't> you. <laughs> as a guy, conversation in that energy space is is everything. Like example, like most women, it's really hard to have genuine conversations with, and it doesn't feel like what's the word. I don't want to say airheaded. Like a lot Definitely. of a lot of women don't have substance, and it's like, bro, I feel like I'm talking to a goddamn babe. You can say airheaded. <laughs> airheaded. That's what it is. Because <laughs> I was going to say something even <laughs> even crazier than that. It's just like, bro, you an NPC or something. Like, I'm, it's it's crazy work. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that we can 
play 2, 2K and Madden, play video games, talk trash, go to the movie, go to the movies, talk about it, break it down, have intellectual conversations, talk about politics, religion, conspiracy theories, whatever the case may be. I just appreciate that so much because it's so rare that you can even... And I know a lot of guys are fucking airheads too. Like huh. it's like, bro, what are you Tuh. talking about? Tuh. You sound like you ain't fucking past the eighth grade. You good? Like <laughs> this is so yeah, I feel like settling is definitely like being in a relationship so on and you just like, bro, just shut up. Shut up. <laughs> like, like why are we here? Why are we why am I here? What do you want? What do you go I'm about to go to my homie crib. <laughs> I'm about to go play the game all day. Like, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Like imagine hearing them call your name. You're just like, bro, what do you want? What do you, and you're supposed to be my best friend. You're supposed to be my lover. What do you want? <laughs> it's crazy work, but that's real shit. So I just feel like it's just it just needs to feel effortless. Like you're literally with your best friend. I literally this bed talk. This is literally what we do outside of the camera. So it's like we might as well bring what we do to y'all. Like this, we lay up, we talk trash, <laughs> we, we we vent. Yes. We we think about, you know what I'm saying, circumstances, and we just, you know, it's just effortless. Welcome to my <laughs> <our> life. <laughs> what makes a relationship worth fighting for? Mm. Mm. Juicy. Mm, that's a good one. Spicy. I feel like a relationship worth fighting for is knowing that this person genuinely doesn't mean you any harm. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like... People are going to disagree. People are going to have arguments. People are going to, you know what I'm saying, not always see eye to eye. But if I know that you have my best interests and I know that you know my heart and vice versa, I feel like that is like, you know, the key. The key to everything. You know what I'm saying? To me, a relationship worth fighting for is when you have that person you literally cannot do without. Mm -hmm. Like... Y'all, be real with y'all. When we separate, I give us 48 hours, I'm sick. Mm -hmm. Like, literally. Like, the whole, my rib, my backbone, like, he's literally a piece of me. Mm -hmm. If he's gone too long, I feel sick. It's just like, if my kids are gone too long, like, even the weekend with grandma or dad or whatever, I'm sick. Like, they're, like, parts of me. So, like, <clears throat> I just feel like to have someone like that, to easily let it go. It's like crazy to me. Yeah. So how do you maintain romance after the honeymoon phase? Mm. Mm. I feel like personally, <clears throat> the honeymoon phase it shouldn't end. Like it never ends. Like I feel like we've been together forever, but I also treat it like I'm still trying to get you and keep you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I still want to be silly. I still, I feel like also it's different when you actually enjoy the person you with. It's like we actually have fun. Like, we actually wake up six o'clock, four o'clock in the morning and just <laughs> out of our sleep laughing about dumb shit and then fall back to sleep. Like, that's what we do on a daily basis. And it's not, it's like effortless. It just don't feel like we're trying. And yeah. I feel like it, once it feels like you're trying to make it work and keep it fresh and, you, you're already losing a piece of the fundamental aspect of the relationship, which is love. The love should just be effortless, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. You're my best friend. Literally. So it's just like, it's not like I'm with a girl and I'm trying to court and trying to have, like, listen, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with the gang. <laughs> I just I just got finished busting your ass and getting my lick back in, in college football. <laughs> Whatever. I just got my lick back and shit. I ain't gonna lie, I was sick the first game. <laughs> I was yeah. I was up. Tell I was going crazy, part. and then next thing you know, she came back. So I got my lick back though. But anyway, mm -hmm. I'm not even gonna go there. We'll see that for another time. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> when it's not when it doesn't feel like you know work. Yeah. You know. Um. So I totally agree with the whole honeymoon phase doesn't end. I think a honeymoon phase is just another cliche word to use mm -hmm. um, for when couples are happy. Because even in the midst of the storm, you can still be happy. Mm -hmm. um, because you have each other to get through the situation. Um, you come up with ideas, resolutions, you know, to solve problems and things like that. It's not always just 
oh, we're not good or mm-hmm. things aren't good, so we're not good. Right, right. Like, I can't fuck with you right now because we're not good. Right. Like, it's never like that. I just mm-hmm. feel like if it is like that, that goes back to our, our previous question where love at first sight, you mm-hmm. like what you see, you know, love what you see, mm-hmm. and things change. Like, <clears throat> people don't get to know a person for who they are. Mm-hmm. They get to know them for this image that they created of that person. Mm-hmm. So when you shift out of that image, it's just like, ugh, that's when this honeymoon phase goes away mm-hmm. because you don't see them for who they are. Mm-hmm. So I think that's one thing that we did from the beginning. Like we had long talks late at night, any past traumas, bad things that happened, we opened up about a lot. So mm-hmm. like, you get to see why that person handles things the way that they do. Mm-hmm. You guys come together to like conform to one another's needs when it comes to communication, when it comes to understanding, when it comes to things like that because of what they've been through. A lot of people don't even have those serious conversations. Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, you like me? I like you. We're going to hang out. We're having fun. We're cute together. Mm-hmm. Take a picture on Instagram. We're getting so many likes. And that's the honeymoon phase. Right. But when shit hits the fan, it's just like, who are you? Yeah. Like, I don't really know you. Mm-hmm. So I don't have to be here or I don't have to deal with this because mm-hmm. you're not who I thought you were. Right. But and if then, you never painted that picture in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And this, got false, to, this false idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Never painted that in the beginning. Then mm-hmm. you would know that person. Like, mm-hmm. I wholeheartedly know this person inside and out. Mm-hmm. It's only been a year. Mm-hmm. Like, But we also took that time with each other. Like, that was something that was important for us. Mm -hmm. And also, it was effortless. Like, Mm -hmm. I tell you something. No, I told him something. He told me something. We broke it down and said, okay, so maybe that's why you handle a situation like this. Or maybe that's why I can't tolerate this or I can't take something like that. And we learned to love each other the way we need to be loved and Mm -hmm. not the way we pictured how it should be. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another thing that gets us through anything. So Mm -hmm. that's definitely... Yeah, and I also feel like, you know, to piggyback off of that, I feel like a lot of people just kind of like, what's the question again? (laughs) Yo, you're done. No, what is it? Like, I I low-key forgot to. Hold on. (laughs) (laughs) How do you maintain romance after the honeymoon phase? Right. So, because I, I, you would, all right. So, one thing is, I'd be trying not to interject, but no, you, was go, you was going crazy and then I lost it. <laughs> like, wait, what were we talking about again? Okay, Bro sorry. was going on, and I'm like, ding, 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 it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question again? I'm sorry, babe. You know how I get when I go talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> 24 hours later. <laughs> Yo, see how he does me? Dirty. All right, all right. No, no. Dirty. No, nah, seriously, though. No, I just decide the honeymoon phase is definitely something that somebody created to just kind of, you know, uh, it'll brush over, it'll go over, it'll fade out. You know what I'm saying? But that's because it was never real from the beginning. A lot of, yeah. people, a lot of people, man, they just be, like you said, they get it for... You know, for guys, they probably, you know, infatuated with the person's physical, with the chick, or the woman. She probably like, oh, this guy has so much potential, or he has money, or this, this, and that. And it's never really genuine. Yeah. So, we came in it from the rip, like, let's play Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, let's, uh, let's go, let's go to Sandbox VR and play some, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's go get tacos. You ever had a burrito pizza, bro? I haven't had a burrito pizza until I met this person. Introduced him to some Introduced stuff. Introduced me to a burrito pizza. I'm just Fire. saying. I'm just saying. Just listen, if we ain't ever have a burrito pizza, man. Go to Real Tacos. Shout out to Real Taco. Atlanta. Yeah, listen. Facts. But my point is, you know, at the end of the day, I can't see me getting tired of you. Oh, like, babe. no, no, for real shit. I don't know. And yeah. that's why you got that. <laughs> another thing too crazy i feel like a lot of people think romance has to be expensive Mm -hmm. like for me to romanticize you i gotta take you on this big trip or i gotta spend all this money like little small romantic things that we do throughout the day he's had a long day while he's laying down rubbing his back making Mm -hmm. him feel comfortable or if he's had a long you clip day. my toenails, baby. Yo. You're the first woman to ever clip my toenails or fingernails. Like, here, give me your nails. <laughs> I feel like I had a private esthetician. 
Like, and that what they it call? Uh, I, I think that's what they call, right? Estheticians. I don't know. Nail tech, if you ask me. Something like that. <laughs> Whatever the word is, phrase is. But yeah, that's that was at that moment. I was like, damn, she really, she really fuck with the kid. I mean, I've been knew that. That's not what at that, that moment I knew, but it was more like a. Then that was a whole nother level unlocked of like what she's capable of doing as a wife. You know what I'm saying? Just like that the level of intimacy to just be like, I'm gonna clip your nails, your feet, your toenails, your fingernails, get the cuticles out. She got the jaws and started started doing <laughs> the damn what's it called? Filing them. Mm-hmm. I had, my the last person that did that was my grandma. Rest in peace. Real rap. She used to do that. So it doesn't go unappreciated for sure. Yeah, so and that costs nothing. Mm-hmm. I already had the filers here. The net clipper was already here. So it's just like to be romantic, you don't have to spin a bag. Like that's a lot of people's problem. On for no swipe her off her feet, mm-hmm. all this, all that. I gotta pay for this, I gotta pay for that. Mm-hmm. And it's just like that's not that's where a lot of the romantic phase and the honeymoon phase it goes away. It's burnt like, out. You know, burnt out your expenses listen. trying to keep up with <laughs> Listen. You know, all these restaurants and shit going to root Chris every other week. Listen, cook his favorite meal, rub his back, oil this scap and brush his hair, ties mm-hmm. do rag up. Like you can do a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Find something that that person likes to do. Babe loves to record music. We record whole songs together. I've never been in a studio in my life. <laughs> But, mm-hmm. like, that's just, like, little things that you bond together mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. romantic because it's just, like, you're doing something that each other mm-hmm. loves. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. And like, so also, like, you, like, people, you got to listen to your partner. Like, I actively listen to her. And um, I remember she was telling me how she uh, never been on a picnic before. And, like, oh. you know, I was like, okay, whenever I get the chance to, you know, set up something like that, I'm going to definitely... You know, lock that in, and then you know it was our anniversary. I was like, it'll just be a perfect time to do to do that picnic, and set everything up, had her blindfolded. You know what I'm saying? Had cooked our favorite meal. You know, one of her favorite meals. She loved pasta. I did put the salmon steaks on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, chef's kiss. Yeah, and it was dope. We had the video, the little board games, little Uno, and all that. And like you, she's like you said, that didn't really, you know, it. It cost, but it wasn't like, yo, I didn't spend a thousand dollars, a couple hundred dollars on it. It was just a thought that counts. It was, yes. You know, it was, people was walking past like, yo, bro, you you did that. And I'm like, bro. Yo. The, lady, the lady was like, I've been with this man 37 years and I ain't been on the picnic yet. She could have kept that to she herself. Could've. She killed him. She killed him. I ain't going to lie. He, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Don't 37 years is crazy. Yeah. 37 years is crazy. Thanks. Go get your woman a picnic, man. Like, this is a small thing. So. Yeah. Just, but going into that, it's a whole other different topic. We're gonna stop it right there because yeah. you know how I get about women and expenses go and ahead, all that. Go ahead. Talk, pop your shit, bitch. Talk, <laughs> talk about it. I'm just saying, like, women nowadays, they're just money hungry. It's all about what you got in your pockets, mm-hmm. not if you got substance, not if you can teach me something, not if you can even change the tires on my car. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just really just, can you buy me a Birkin? Mm-hmm. You know, can you take me to the mall? Can you. Lady wouldn't even get out the car mm-hmm. to go to Cheesecake Factory. Sis, that's some good cheesecake. You yeah. tripping. Like they they they, they <laughs> cauliflower, they barbecue, uh was the Korean barbecue cauliflower? Crazy. Was good food. Good, good. quality food. Yeah. Like just cause it don't cost six hundred dollars don't mean it ain't good food. Mm-hmm. I'd have been the STK and been disappointed. <laughs> like Two hundred dollar, two hundred fifty dollar bill right, right, for right. like steak did not be cooked how I wanted. Yeah. The what did I have like the stream beans or whatever. I told them that you know, like double steam it because I don't like them hard. <laughs> like yeah. I was eating an right. apple and I was just like, you want me to pay two hundred fifty dollars? Yeah. Or I could have went to the Cheesecake Factory, Texas. Um, what is it, Texas Long, Roadhouse, yeah. Longhorns, Outback Chili's for the matter, and mm. still get everything that I want for little or nothing, mm. or either a half of that check, you know mm. what I'm saying? I'd still be satisfied. But it's just like nowadays, it's just got this picture that. But we putting our motherfucking money into investments, building businesses, financial freedom, all that generational, generational wealth. wealth. Back. You see what I'm saying? That's what we're, you know what I'm saying? But I think it's just, if you worried about the dumb shit, you worried about the bags and the and the trips and the, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, priorities got to be, be right. Let's, let's, a lot of people are letting social media dictate 
how they should be living. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. they 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 want to they want to live this 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 social media life from you know these celebrities. And it's like, bro, you got to think about it. The economy is crazy right <laughs> now. Like <laughs> you, you tripping. You about to go. You about to throw it all away and go broke, be homeless and shit to try to impress somebody. You fucking. You know. It just it just irks me so bad to like <laughs> you want Birkins and Roof Chris and mm-hmm. SDK and all this, but you ain't offering nothing but raw fish between your legs. Sleep like, raw pH fish is crazy. Like, you'd be sleeping on a mattress in your crib, like that type of stuff. Like Air them the type of girls would be asking yeah. for that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, that's a whole different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can, we can go in with this. We getting off. That'll yeah. be that'll be on a. Another episode coming soon Listen, where I really break it down. That part. That's like irks me so bad. I guess because it's just my upbringing, but mm. we're going to leave that where it's set. Yeah. <laughs> Stop what you're doing and hit that subscribe button real quick, though, right now. Hurry up. Click it, click it, click it, click it. And like, and comment. Support black businesses. Yes. We got kids. <laughs> <laughs> that part. Listen. We got a daughter on the way in 2024. <laughs> Listen. Subscribe. Nine, nine weeks. <laughs> nine weeks in from from today. About to be eight. About to be eight. <laughs> but I think that was a, just been a good first episode. We we we, we hit a lot on the head. We talked about a lot of, a lot of things. Yeah. Episode one. We definitely disclaimer. Disclaimer. Maybe we forgot. We are not dictating what you do in your life. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we are not one of those podcasts that's just like, I need to go do that or I need to go be that. You need to <laughs> man up. You aren't doing enough. That's <laughs> why she doesn't want you. You're not a high valued man. <laughs> you want that man to love you and you want to. We're not here for none of that. We're just speaking our own mind. Now, if it fits to you and it helps you, and it hey. resonates. More power to you. More power to you. Yes, yes. Come back and connect with us again. But it's right. just literally talking off our dome. Literally. Doing what we do every day. Yeah. In front of you guys. Indeed. Indeed. And just expanding our community. You know what I'm saying? Creating the community. Creating. Um, you know, I feel like at the end of the day, a lot of people just need a safe space to speak their mind and it's a lot of topics and a lot of things going on in the world and a lot of people don't really have outlets or don't have the means to you know have a production like you know that we're blessed to you know have and three cameras set up and um audio and you know i mean this is just a way to kind of bridge the gap between people who can and the people who want to like that you know what Fine. i mean so um this episode is more so introduction of what we got going on and what we're going to be bringing but in future episodes we will be having interviews with artists and business owners and just everyday people that just want to talk and just give their point of view on different things so stay tuned and hit the subscribe button like comment help this algorithm you know get us help boost us and get us in this algorithm this please so diabolical because it uh, only gets better from here yeah yeah it's only gonna get it's only going up it's only going up it's not we're not just leaving y'all in the comments like y'all gonna be talking to us literally like uh, a part of the episode yes yes that's that's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be fire it's gonna be gonna be gonna be be, 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 be. the drum with 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 with, uh with janet jackson and and buster rhymes gonna be gonna make your body free Yeah. Let him uh uh uh. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Yeah, right. this I'm is us all day. Bed. So yeah, y'all tune in. He's yeah. tired. I'm tired. Um, By the way, it's, it's almost it's almost midnight. Yes. It's almost midnight. And we're up here with you guys. Yes. It's almost midnight. And I'm almost eight months pregnant. And I'm exhausted. So tune in. Yes. Tap in. Yes. Smash that subscribe button. Definitely get into it. Get in the comments. Get at us. Subscribe, like, follow, and comment. Yeah. Yum, yum. Eat, Eat them up. up. <laughs> you want me to cut this? Go.